Thank you for that. So, hello everyone. My name is Sam Presley, and I currently work for Dyson here in the UK. I'm based out of Bristol. And also, in amongst that, I also volunteer for the IET, where I chair our Young Professionals Community Committee. So I'm hoping today to give you a bit of an insight into both of those areas of my life at the moment and how they link together. So at Dyson, I'm currently a software engineer and I work on our very early stage projects, trying to understand how we want them to work for our customers. This is looking at our connected products and how they work from everything from the product itself to the mobile app and the web services that support them. I previously worked for Dyson as an intern, um, enjoyed it so much that I went back um, and I've been there for just over a year now. Before that, I was at the University of Southampton on the South Coast where I studied electronic engineering. So Dyson, yep, the vacuum cleaner company, I know that's what you're all thinking. Um, we've, we've grown considerably since um, we first came about. We're now about 10,000 people globally. Majority of those are in the UK, so we've got about 5,000 people based out of our headquarters in Bristol um, and in Malmesbury, which is in Wiltshire. But we also have some really significant offices um, around the world as well. So we have a huge amount of development work going on um, out of Malaysia and Singapore, um, where that really acts as a really important tech hub for us, um, and is also really close to some of our manufacturers as well. I specifically work in the connectivity team. There's about 150 of us, and we're spread across Malmesbury, Bristol in the UK, but also Singapore and our Shanghai offices as well. So Dyson Connected Products, um, I'm sure you've all seen the vacuum cleaners, the hand dryers, um, I think everybody knows the name. Um, but Connected Products is something that's relatively new for Dyson. So we launched our very first Connected Product way back in, not that far really, 2015, so only three years ago. And that was our first generation of Connected Products, and that was a robotic vacuum cleaner. Now that vacuum cleaner had actually been in development for an incredibly long time. I think it was almost 15 years ago where we almost launched one and we decided at the last minute to, to cancel it because it wasn't good enough. So we've recently come back with our kind of second generation of products um, and those are in the categories of environmental control, so things like um, purifying fans and heaters, <coughs> robotics, so we have a second generation robot vacuum cleaner and also connected lighting as well. And I have to say when I went into engineering I didn't necessarily think you know this is what I was going to do in the future um, but I'm finding it incredibly fulfilling working on these projects products that people go out and buy on the shelves and that really work incredibly well. So just a, an insight into one of our products in particular. So this is one of our air purifiers, one of our latest air purifiers. And air quality is increasingly becoming more and more <coughs> important. People are more um, aware of the air quality problems that we face um, in the cities around the world, um, particularly in the UK. Um, I know London is one of the first but also other cities around the UK are starting to introduce clean air zones, and that's um, driven by the poor air quality that's largely driven by traffic um, that's building up in our city centres. And this problem is increasingly becoming indoor as well, and in fact, in many cases, air quality indoors can be much worse than outdoors because we're making our houses more and more efficient, which means we're removing the drafts from our houses, which means all the pollutants and bad stuff that we, we put into our houses stays there. And it's proven this has a really significant impact on your health, particularly, um, I believe, in young people. So in our products, we're able to sense particulate matter, NO2, and also VOCs. Some sources of really bad air quality can be things like candles, it turns out they're actually really bad for you. Um, cleaning products, this all ends up getting trapped in your house um, and can contribute to the, the onset of certain allergies and health conditions. So our products teach you about the air quality in your home, um, indicate to you what things are potentially causing these problems, and then we do something about that, and we tell you um, how we've gone about um, improving the situation and displaying the positive impact that we've had. And I find this really fun, working on these products. Um, these are products that sell in huge numbers, um, and have been incredibly successful. And building things that people use on a daily basis and improve their lives is actually really fulfilling. So at Dyson, we've got a load of really core technologies. We first started out as a vacuum cleaner company, and that was when our founder, James Dyson, found that the cyclone 
could be used to eliminate vacuum cleaner bags from our products, from the vacuum cleaner. And that technology is kind of fed into many of our products that have followed. So we've made, gone from one cyclone to many cyclones to smaller cyclones to now transitioning our vacuum cleaners from not being mains plug-in vacuum cleaners but to battery-powered vacuum cleaners that can perform just as well. And these core technologies have started to come together into different products as well. So things like our purifying fans and also more recently in personal care. So we have the Dyson hairdryer and recently we've even gone into hair styling tools. I don't think many people ever thought that there would be Instagrammers posting photos of Dyson products um, and an absolute craze around product launch of, from Dyson, but, but it has happened. We also have a lot of expertise in robotics and we actually fund a robotics lab here in London at Imperial College. And some of the research there um, has been feeding into the development of our products. And I think it's safe to say that the products that you see today from Dyson really are just a start. Um, we've been developing numerous projects in the background that are due for launch over the next few coming years. So um, it's all about kind of watching this space, I guess. There's another project I haven't mentioned. Um, we are also developing an electric vehicle, which was um, a real significant step for us as a company. So that's a bit about what I do. And I have to say, the job that I do right now didn't really exist five years ago. And I wanted to use that as a way of highlighting to you that you can't necessarily plan your career. Um, it's great to plan your career and say, you know, five years I want to do this, 10 years I want to be there. But you can't, you can't plan it step by step. You can, you can have an idea of what's going on, but really what it's all about is taking opportunities as you see them and making the most of them. So in amongst my, my role at Dyson, I've been doing quite a lot of work with the IET. And this is actually helps me a lot in my day-to-day -day job. Um, and I've been learning a huge amount from it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what I do at the IET and why I think if you don't already work with your um, institution, and why I think you should be volunteering as well. So the IET, um, we're an interdisciplinary organisation and our mission is to inspire, inform and influence the global engineering community to support technology innovation. And I guess what this means is just supporting engineers to be more successful, connecting them with each other to improve the engineering world and improve innovation. So we're quite large, we have about 168,000 members at the moment, and those members are distributed globally. So um, we really aren't a purely UK institution, we do have a global reach. And a large part of the work the IET does is based around local and international networks of volunteers, and events that are delivered by them for the people in the areas um, around them. So I guess one of the first questions is, how did I get involved with the IET? And I can't say I grew up saying I'm going to be a member of the IET and I'm going to be doing all of this stuff in my spare time, my evenings, and I'm going to enjoy it, right? So um, when I first started university, back at the end of 2013, um, I was lucky enough to receive a scholarship from the IET called the IET's Diamond Jubilee Scholarship. This scholarship was for um, first year undergraduate engineers and um, was the IET's way of recognising engineers and encouraging more people to join the profession. Shortly after gaining that scholarship, I um, received an email. Um, the IET was looking to form a council to represent all of the people receiving that scholarship. I received this email and thought, you know, that sounds like a good thing to do. Um, I can't say I went, wow, that looks amazing. Um, I just thought, okay, this could be an interesting opportunity. I'll, get, I'll give it a shot, really. And over the years of working with the IET, um, I guess I picked up more and more, saw more interesting things throughout the organisation and recognised um, more opportunities, really, to influence the institution and a real appetite to take on the views of younger members and help them influence the institution in the future. So after a few years of working with the council the Diamond, the Diamond Jubilee Scholarship Council, um, I was offered the opportunity to join our Young Professionals Community Committee as the student representative for the UK. And this was a new move for that committee. It was um, the introduction of student representatives on this committee. Um, and also around that same time, I launched 
a student group at my University of Southampton, um, and this was the IET's on-campus programme. So the IET has these on-campus groups around the world. Um, at the moment, we have about 115 of these globally, and 38 of those are in the UK. And I think it's really important to highlight that the majority aren't in the UK. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic seeing the work of these groups around the world. You would be amazed by the commitment of some of the student volunteers that run these groups, and we see some absolutely fantastic events. And it's all about students running a community and running events and activities that are really relevant to them and that um, are the things that they, they really need. And we support them, um, both with resources and also financially. So that, that's all been going really well. And um, I was lucky enough to be offered the opportunity to, to join the exec committee of the YPCC just about a year ago. And I recently took over as chair of that committee as well. So I just wanted to quickly um, show you our committee. So we're a really diverse bunch. There's about 20 of us in total. And we're spread all across the world. So we have representatives for each of the IET regions in which we operate. So that's the UK, Europe, Middle East and Africa, South, South Asia. Asia Pacific and Americas. So my committee is spread from Malaysia and Singapore to India, Kazakhstan, New Zealand, Switzerland, the Americas, um, Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong, and even Scotland. So um, we're a pretty diverse bunch. Uh, we don't exclude anybody. And it's really good seeing um, the, the fantastic ideas that come from people all around the world. And we really get to see um, the views and the problems of each of those regions from everybody in the committee. So it's a really inspiring group of people to work with. And there's some, been some brilliant initiatives come out from us in the past. And um, I think it's safe to say there's more to come. So I'm just going to take you through a, a few of those initiatives as well. Just recently, um, we held our Young Professionals Volunteering Conference where we brought together some of our most dedicated young professional volunteers around the world, and also people that were just interested in getting more involved and use this as an opportunity to demonstrate what they could be doing. So I've just got a short video, which I can play for you. It's been an amazing experience at the YPCC 2018. Ever since I've been here, I've been meeting people, a lot of networking, a lot of interesting talks. It's way beyond what I imagined before coming here. So the event today has actually been really interesting. I've learned a lot about the IET that I didn't know before. The fact that the IET is so global uh, has been really impressive to me and is brand new to me. I loved meeting the people today. They were so amazing and they were very loving and the energy that I got from them is enormous. I'm still a student, so I can look up to them and then I can see what they are doing in their own industry. It's so amazing. I'm feeling invigorated and super interesting meeting people from around the world doing the same thing that I'm doing. Forming a connection and getting to learn from them. So this was a really successful event for us and we were able to, to collect a huge number of ideas from all of the attendees. And this has all started now to feed in to the committee's work through the next year where we can start putting some of these really good ideas into action. So one of the initiatives that you can get involved in, um, is super easy to get involved in, depending on no matter what institution that you're, you're from at the moment or whatever you're studying, is the IET's Presenter Around the World competition. So we have heats of PATW all around the world, and this is a presentation competition. That's, um, the idea is that it's a technical presentation, but the judging is based on the presentation style and delivery. So we've seen um, topics on PATW all the way from railway in the energy sector through to biology and artificial intelligence. So this really is an interdisciplinary competition, and I really encourage you to look out for it and get involved with it if it's something that would interest you. We've actually seen many people join the IET as volunteers um, after participating in this competition. So um, do take a look and um, get involved. 
We at the Young Professionals also, um, and it links into some other things that have been mentioned already today, act as kind of ambassadors um, for how things should be done um, at the institution in the future. And um, one of those things was how we thought our events should look. And this up here is just one example. So what we were able to do was to bring together the fashion and technology industries into one event, and we called it Textile. So we had two speakers that have been involved in wearable technologies. One of the speakers had developed um, a Twitter dress that had LEDs stitched into this dress, um, and it was for a celebrity, I've forgotten which one. Um, but it was really, really interesting bringing together these two almost, you would think, entirely distinct industries in one room. It's not very often that you manage to get um, a huge group of fashion students and engineers um, into Savoy Place down the road. So that was a really successful event. If you're studying here in London, um, we do have quite a few on-campus groups here and a few more on the way. So if you're an engineering student and you would like to get involved in our student groups, um, please do check those out. And if you're not listed up on the board, um, we're always looking to open more on-campus groups. So please speak to myself or um, any of the IET staff team or volunteers that are here tonight. So we also have a number of upcoming events which you may like to come along to. So the final of our presentation, present around the world competition um, will be held here in London very, very soon. And anybody can sign up to go along to that. That's also held alongside the Achievement Awards where many other IET awards are handed out. So it's a really good opportunity to meet more IET volunteers. We also have um, one of the IET Eng Talk series focused on the future of transport. And I believe this is being delivered by somebody from Jaguar Land Rover and is focused on electric vehicles. And we also have the Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards, which the IET runs. And that final um, and presentation award ceremony is held here in London also, and is a great event to go to. So I would really encourage you to, to go along if you would like to see more. And we also have our IET London local network, just like we have local networks all around the world. Um, so if you would like to volunteer for the IET, you can be more than happy to get involved with that. So I guess one of the things I wanted to highlight was why I think you should volunteer for your institution. Um, so it may be that you're already affiliated with an institution or you're not, um, and you're looking for an institution that might represent you. Now, I think um, there was at one point I didn't really understand what professional engineering institutions did, what the point was, um, but I really do understand that now. And I've actually gained a huge amount out of volunteering for my institution. And I think that the real key thing is that I think all of the professional engineering institutions have a real appetite to allow younger members to shape their future. And there's a number of skills I've really developed kind of on the way. So I think as an early careers engineer, you have um, quite often a very um, distinct role um, in your organisation. And it can maybe take some time to gain other opportunities and develop new skills. But volunteering outside of your day job will enable you to gain those skills in a slightly different setting and can really help you accelerate your career. So I've mentioned uh, leadership, networking, meeting more people like you, uh, meeting people from other institutions and understanding what people do in their day jobs. I personally find it really interesting speaking to my committee members who might be working in Hong Kong on railway systems or in America on, you know, whatever it is, um, just trying to understand what people do around the world outside of your very small bubble in your company, in your department, in your team, or your city, or your university colleagues um, is incredibly, incredibly interesting and can really help broaden your horizons. So that's it from me this evening. Um, I'd be really keen to talk to you afterwards if you're interested in um, anything I'm doing at Dyson and you'd like to get involved there or also at the IET. I'm joined here today by, I think we've got some volunteers here um, and also the IET staff team. So come and visit our store and we'll be more than happy to talk to you about how to get involved. Right. Thank you.